All right, so let's start. Um, one thing that I wanted to um, talk about is uh, getting from the getting it from the last uh, meeting. We were speaking about the uh, channel deprecation issue, uh, and uh, actually, let me check. I'm gonna share this with you here on the on the chat. Uh, this is the, the last um, meeting notes. You have to scroll to see the last comment. And uh, we were we were discussing whether it's a good idea um, to have a channel deprecation flag or or feature on this KPI so that you can mark a channel as deprecated. But then it went, uh, you know, it went farther, <laughs> a little bit farther. It's like, hey, uh, what about not just uh, knowing if uh, something is deprecated or not? Like, it's not a boolean, right? I want to know more. I want to know the reasons. I want to know uh, until, or, or I want you to warn me before it's deprecated, right? Like, this is going to be operating until uh, this date and time, right? Um, so. Yeah, something like this, and if if it's there, uh, an alternative channel. Uh, so as a consumer, for instance, I would like to understand if, uh, okay, this channel is deprecated, but uh, and it's going to be deprecated soon for this and other reasons, and uh, but I need this information. Where can I subscribe to get the, the same information or the same kind of information? Um, so, yeah. Uh, there are some, um, let me, there are some issues with this. Um, so I mentioned explicitly some people from the API community because I know this, this um, conversation has been going on also on, on Open API. So, I think we can probably learn from their discussions so we don't repeat uh, the same things. And let me try to find, ah, it's here. Ah, here it is. Let me share the link here and separate them there. So that's the issue. And uh, so you can see that Phil Sturgeon there left a, a, a huge comment. <laughs> I hate you, Phil, if you're looking at this, if you're watching this. <laughs> no, it's, it's great, actually. Um, so the thing with this is, it's always the same. Are we uh, over-engineering at the, the deprecation feature? Are we um, getting, not getting enough value of it, out of it? Like, um, uh, for instance, uh, for me, deprecated true or false seems like very little value. Um, let me share my screen here. Um, so for me, something like deprecated true is is not very valuable. It, it is, but not so much. And as Phil was uh, explaining here, then that's the what uh, uh, the story, that the discussion they had in the past. Then they uh, they thought, okay, we can probably put a string here, and it means it's deprecated, and that's the reason why this uh, something is deprecated. In our case, it's a channel. Then. Um, someone thought, okay, so this is a message and this is the alternative uh, channel for us. And, but then people stepped up <laughs> and started saying like, hey, what about scenes at version scenes? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it gets more complex and complex and it's like, oh, well, what the fuck? Um, so yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't have a, a I, ha I have a gut feeling, right? Um, that probably the last one is too over-engineered. So this is too much, probably. And I have the feeling that deprecated through is, or deprecated with the messages is not enough. 
that we could do better, right? Um, so probably having something like this or having something like uh, I propose here, like uh, I wanted to, I call this sunset, by the way, uh, following the, the header definition, uh, the HTTP header definition by uh, Eric Wilde. So, so yeah, that's, uh, by the way, that's a standard. So we could probably follow the, the same, more or less the same structure, right? So daytime, uh, the message, stop using it now. <laughs> and an alternative channel. So I think, in my, in my opinion, um, I think that makes sense. That will cover most of the use cases. Um, and then, uh, as for instance, for, for, uh, for Phil, he said that deprecated true is fine. <laughs> OK. It's, you know, it's, it's a matter of uh, flavors, right? Um, so I don't know. I, I wanted to know your uh, opinion on this. What's, uh, what do you think um, is the best way to go right now? I think the date field, is that the date that it's marked for removal, like the cutoff date? Or is it the date that it was marked as deprecated? Like in the previous example that you gave, um, the sunset one. This one? Uh, yeah, you had one where you used sunset, right? Ah, yeah, my suggestion. Um, yeah, your suggestion, yeah. yeah. So that date time, is that the date when it was introduced when when it was marked as deprecated or the date when it's no. going to stop working it's going to stop working yeah okay yeah that that's that's useful I, I yeah yeah i i think that's that's good i mean to me the message would probably you know it could be like a link to an issue in jira or something like that it explains more detail mm -hmm. um i think um you know because I, I think that deprecating a channel is kind of probably a big deal in a lot of organizations and, you know, different organizations might have different needs in terms of how much, how much information do, do people need, but yeah, I could have something like that, external docs. Yeah, I was, like I was that. thinking that we already have it on, uh, on other places of the, of, of the CKPI spec and open API spec. Yeah. Uh, like something, we could have something like uh, external docs uh, or external link or something like this. I don't know, whatever. Um, so we could have, um, I don't know, uh, myjira.com, blah, 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 ISO number seven, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so that, that will, because if we put it in the message, then if we want to extract message from a uh, value from the message, then we will have to parse it. And then it's, you know, it's human. It could be Spanish, it could be Polish, it could be English, it could be anything, right? Chinese or whatever. So the message shouldn't be uh, structured in, in any way, right? It should be just a free form information for the user. Um, mm -hmm. But if we want to, ha to have more information, I think that's valuable. Having an external link, which is also optional, right? In the end, the only uh, the only required thing is the daytime. Like, just tell me when this is going to stop working, and um, and if you don't know when this is going to stop working, just uh, <laughs> just put a I don't know uh, five years from now or something or ten years from now, and that's it, uh, and forget about it. Um, maybe it maybe it shouldn't be required if if you really don't know. I think it's better to to say if if you're not sure exactly when, then it's better to say that instead of making up you know incorrect information. But then we have the problem of uh, everything becoming optional. Uh, then you can have a, an empty sunset object. <laughs> yeah. What does it mean? Right. Uh, because if it's, I mean, if it's sunset, it's one thing. If it's deprecated, it's something different, right? Because actually deprecated means that it already happened, right? It's in the past. So that, uh, that the word well, it, it, it I'm not sure, like not in, well, I mean, I see that word a lot in, in the Java world where 
certain classes and APIs are marked as deprecated, but they still tend to work for, you know, years. Uh, they say, well, we're going to remove this in some later version. So you should move away from it. But there have been classes in the Java library that have been marked as deprecated for, for years and several versions, and they're still there. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure yeah. about that. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, it says sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you don't know where you're gonna sunset something, right? Or when you're gonna uh, remove completely something that's gonna stop working, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It may be it, uh, it may be good to to have this as optional, as you said. Then um, it's probably a matter of uh, understanding uh, or reworking the 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 solution probably uh or probably i mean because deprecating and sunsetting are two different things right so probably we could have something like this true or false right and uh mm -hmm. when is something going to become uh be sunset right when it's going to be closed uh and stop working like deprecated true deprecated could be uh true or false and then the sunset could be just uh um i don't know the sunset could be just uh like when this is going to stop working it's, it's not going to be deprecated anymore it's it's actually because deprecated is something that's still there but yeah. you couldn't use and sunset is actually that uh, when, when it's when something is sunset um it means that uh, it's not going to be there anymore. So it's right. like it never existed, right? Um, it's going to fail if you use it or if you try to use it. Right. Um, so, yeah, so probably we're talking about two different things here uh, deprecation and sunsetting. Yeah. Well, deprecation is kind of a warning that at yeah. some point it's going to get sunsetted, right? So, yeah. Um, okay. I'm, so, I'm uh, not. I'm not sure if they should be different, really. I think definitely we need to think more about this. I think. Uh... Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a thought. I'll keep uh, giving a thought because I think this is this is important because this this conversation already uh, popped out uh, popped up um, many times uh, when talking to companies using async API and. Or not using async API, but they are concerned about uh, how to document event-driven architectures. So, mm. so yeah. Okay. And, Thanks. And the, the 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 link to the that is in the issue to the to Slack. Is there some more details like the use case? I mean, how somebody would use it? Is it only for uh, just letting know the user that the, the following uh, channel is deprecated and just that's it or mm -hmm. yeah so for instance uh it's very common that versioning in event driven architectures happen by um changing the chain the name of the channel so for instance uh, uh let me update this for instance uh, you don't see my notes for the QCon presentation. <laughs> um, so something that happens many times is that you have something like this, for instance, uh, um, users, um, users slash um, one uh, created. Well, that could be confusing. Like users created, and uh, and then you publish messages there every time a user has been created or something, right? That's pretty common. But then at some point you have to make a breaking change on the message there. Uh, you shouldn't, but sometimes it's inevitable or it's cheaper than than trying to uh, maintain everything backward compatible. So someone comes up with something like this. I'm just inventing the name, okay? Uh, you should not do this, but uh, <laughs> that's uh, for illustration purposes. So then, uh, 
Uh, for instance, so here you have, um, imagine that here you have a full name email, and here you have um, first name, uh, last name, email. Okay. So, something that you could do, of course, is that you can add first name here and last name. So you make this backward compatible, uh, but then you add to an existing message and this keeps growing over time. And it's like, at some point you have to stop doing this, right? Or at some point you might want to remove this, this full name, you don't want this anymore. Um, or, or something else, like you want to like, the name or whatever. Um, so then you have to create a new, a new channel, a new topic, uh, right? Yeah, in this case, you want to tell people well, that, that this is really complicated. Um, I think it's a multi-step process. Script, uh, and also, yeah. you want to say uh, at some point, uh, uh, Michael, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of noise from your own. Michael, I'm hearing, from me? I'm hearing a lot of noise from your own. Oh, sorry. I'll, uh... <laughs> Thanks. So, um, so at some point you want to say, hey, this, this topic here is going to be removed, completely removed. So you will not be able to subscribe to it. Uh, I don't know, on the 2020, whatever, right? Um, that's, the, that's the thing. So you, you're hinting people using your service or subscribing to your topic or whatever. Um, you're hinting people that they should start migrating to this other topic, which will contain the same information conceptually, but in a different way. Uh, you will have to change your code, right? You will have to change, uh, instead of receiving full name, you will receive this and you will have to join both. And uh, you know what I mean? So that's, uh, that's a common use case, uh, let's say. And the idea is that spec does not only, it's not only used to um, say that it's deprecated, it's also to provide some more metadata. So you can have some mechanism that is checking, okay, that something deprecated, send an email to subscribers, whatever. Exactly, exactly. So you can probably alert people that, hey, um, it's one month uh, until this is gonna become deprecated, you better, and uh, you better update your code, right? Uh, otherwise, this will stop uh, working. Or, yeah, yeah, something like this, right? Or and uh, did you check the uh, GraphQL? Because for GraphQL, I would say the uh, use point. case is pretty similar because uh, you don't deprecate the whole API, but a specific query or mutation. And as far as I know, it's only now you have directive, I think, deprecated. Well, yeah, this exists on on JSON schema. So for instance, this could be marked as deprecated. This is already possible on JSON schema uh, by using deprecated true. Okay. okay. But would uh, but that's about the message, right? That's about the, the, the content of the message. But mm -hmm. uh, at some point for operation reasons, you don't want to have these two topics, right? Because it costs you money. Well, the more topics you have, uh, and 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 it becomes like like zombies there, right? Like uh, topics that are there but nobody's using, or 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 some people are using this and some people are using this this one, and then new services might be um, subscribing to the old one, uh, so you end up having to maintain two, <laughs> right? So for operation reasons you want to delete this topic from Kafka or delete this topic from RabbitMQ or from, from Solas, from uh, wherever you want, right? You want to free uh, resources, let's say. It's not just uh, about the, the, the message, right? That's the, what you say, uh, what you say is, uh, about um, GraphQL, it's already possible at the message level. You can mark a property as deprecated. That's already possible. But yeah, that's what we're talking here is a, is a channel level, usually the topic. 
Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, here at Solis, we're uh, trying to define a kind of a topic structure, a standard topic structure we can use internally. And it will have a version number in the topic. So, mm. you know, this, this is totally aligned with that. Very simple to a lot of REST APIs that have a version number in the uh, yeah. URI. Yeah. That's, that's what I usually recommend, like people telling people that uh, you should have uh, a long, um, your, your own um, pattern, let's say, right, or recipe for, for naming topics. So you include, uh, include the version on the, on the topic, right? Could be here, could be at the, the beginning here somewhere. Uh, I actually have a proposal for that, but um, I had to move it out from async API to my own repo, to my own GitHub account, because people were thinking that that was mandatory when using async API. <laughs> so it was like, no, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> In the beginning, async API were just my, my, uh, Notebook, my, my notebook, right? Uh, so <laughs> for for event driven architectures, and uh, I left it there uh, without thinking that uh, it, it was going to become this, right? So so yeah. Um, so I think uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I will I will have a look at this uh, external docs or link or whatever, and probably the. Um, I will also have a look at the um, deprecate, deprecated uh, true plus the sunset. Maybe it was, it's worth it. Uh, and as you, Michael, said, it, it might be worth to have this. Everything here will be optional, and that's it. That's okay. Probably one, one way. I have to leave now to go to my next meeting. So um, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, can you just uh, sorry for that? We should probably have started with you. Uh, can you? Please summarize quickly uh, what's the status of the of the code generator for Spring Cloud Stream. Yes, um, let's see. I made a couple of small changes. Um, like for example, I'm using some specification extensions to specify things that Spring Cloud Stream needs, like something called a consumer group and you know queue name and stuff. So originally, I had those on the channel but they're only relevant to really a subscription. So I've moved those down into subscription. So there's a couple of small changes like that that I'm gonna finish up today. And I wanna do a bit more testing, you know, with a few sample documents I've got. And if everything works, then I'm gonna do a pull request tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, like, I, and again, don't, don't, uh, don't feel uh, bad or anything for pushing draft code. Uh, just uh, if you want to, whenever you want, just create a, even if it's incomplete, just create a draft pull request. And because people just can, can just jump in and help you, right? So okay. and tell you like, hey, Michael, I will take care of this part while you work on this other thing. And um, then you can collaborate there. Or people can start early reviewing the code and making suggestions or, you know, so. Okay, good, yeah, okay. Uh, don't don't. I mean, that it's it's usually a, a good uh, uh, a good way to 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 collaborate by not waiting till the, till the end to to share the, the the code, right? So early early sharing is actually it will be better for you as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, tomorrow then. So uh, okay. Thanks, guys. I'll uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Cheers, Mike. Okay. Lucas, so I think it's you and I now. Um, where's Jonas? Jonas, we're missing you, man. How, how much time you <clears throat> you want to leave for uh, comments on the channel? For comments on the what, sir? On the on this channel topic. On this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, not. Mm, I'm not considering it like uh, super urgent. I'm just uh, starting to survey people, and um, but yeah, at some point, uh, at some point, we will have to to put a schedule for the for the feature, right? Okay. But right now, I'm just uh, surveying people to see what, uh, what they think about it. Um, well. Um, mm, 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 mm. 
what else? We have these things on the generator package, which I think uh, we, we will have to, oops, sorry. I'm gonna turn off notifications, otherwise this is. So thing about this is um, don't know uh, Lucas if you know but uh, so the generator has um, the generator templates right they all have let's take this one which is the most complete I think so they have some things like uh, it's called filters right and filters it's an it's nanjack uh nanjack's um name for helpers <laughs> it's just helpers for the template so for instance if i want to uh nanjax doesn't have a way to convert a string to kebab case or to kml case or anything so you can create uh add filter kebab case kml case Right, and then you can use it. Let me. Then you can use it on the on the templates. Let me check. So I don't know. I think, for instance, the package JSON I think has something. Maybe. No, I think it's a config. Mm. Okay, so for instance, this this one is is a, is a chain of helpers. So it's taking async API channel names with publish. So these are all the channel names containing the publish operation. Uh, translating them to MQTT topics. Uh, dump is something that exists on Nanjax. Uh, and safe as well. So this is like um, this is like um, um, the JSON stringify. This is like JSON stringify dump. And safe is just to remove uh, uh, unsafe characters from being um, um, output. All right. So if you come here. You have this to MQTT topic, which is one of the things that we were using there. It takes a list of topics and then blah, blah, blah. So the thing is that you can add logic uh, to the template in small functions with a name, right? And then you can use them on the, on the, um, on the template to do, to do certain stuff. Um, the thing with this is that if you go now, if I go now here, I was in the Node.js one, so I go to the HTML filters. This might not be a, a good example, but um, let me check. Let's try it. I don't know this one. Yeah. So if I come here, for instance, you will see again, give up case, camel case. Again, the same faction functions uh, define over and over. And if at some point I want to change this, I will have to, and I want this to be propagated to all the templates, I will have to go to every template. And, uh, and update every template, you know, so it's duplicated code. And also we might not be uh, able to update every template because people can create their own templates, right? So, uh, and they will not be pushed uh, here in the generator repo. So, so yeah, there's no, there's no point on, on There's no point in trying to control everything there, right? But the thing is, 
there there are a lot of uh, d duplicated code like like this ones like uh, like all I will say most of the string methods for um, for lodes or for underscore um, they all, almost all of them are present in in some way in all the in all the templates like kebab case camel case this will be very common in every because I mean because you will have to transform strings and names to uh, one of those depending on the language uh, on the programming language you're using right so um, it may have some uh, it may be good to extract it to to become or to have something like a, a library of um, predefined filters so you don't have to add it yourself to your templates and you don't have to maintain it right yep. so yep. that's one way it says abstracting them so put putting them on the on the generator at the generator level as, a, as an SDK right um, so that's one way that's one thing um, then this has become uh, a problem recently uh, I think it was Michael who raised the issue first um, the thing is that for instance, I want to use certain, uh, a, a simple example. To generate code, we would like to use things like QuickType, a library that exists uh, to, generate, uh, to generate types uh, from the JSON schema definition. You can generate Java pojos or Go, Golang structs or everything, right, in every language. So you don't want to do this yourself in your template. Right, you want to have a library that will give you the result, uh, and like this, you will have many other stuff. So, in your template, you want to install a dependency for your template uh, for your template to use during generation, not as the resulting code. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. during generation of during the generation, I need to use this dependency. Probably, this dependency will be um will be done on the on the filters so on the filters you want to do something and you will have to put uh, require something and uh, these filters are um so the package JSONs for this for the for the filters is actually the the generator package so <laughs> you cannot put the dependencies on the generator package because then it this will be a dependency for for everyone, for every template. So then if we do this, the, the number of dependencies will keep growing and growing and growing to, to serve all the purposes, right? So it would be great uh, to have a way to define dependencies for the templates. And so what came to our mind is maybe the templates itself should be um, packages themselves, separated packages. Right, so one of the one of the things we could do here is each of these templates here we could remove them from the or we could leave it here, but um, we could remove it from here uh, and then create a separate package for uh, for each of the templates. Right, each package will have their own package JSON and all this stuff. Right. So then you can control your dependencies, and then the generator will be in charge of installing the dependencies of the template uh, before before generating the, the the code or the documentation before generating the template. You know, uh, you know what I mean. You follow? You follow? Yeah. yeah. So they they're basically you would like to have a like a mono repo generator would be a a repository of different let's say different projects. Each of those templates, as you said, different package JSON. Yeah, could be mono so repo. Release them. Sorry. Could be mono repo or not. Uh, yeah. The thing is that we could have the thing again. <coughs> so someone probably has a. Um, I, mean, I, I know that some people have templates, private templates for them in their companies that that are not here and they are not willing to share. Uh, so they should be also. Um, 
it should be possible for them to specify uh, dependencies or on, on their templates, right? Huh? So uh, again, we will not control all the templates, never. And, that, and that's not the, 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 the vision. So the vision is that people can create their own templates and they can publish or maybe not. Uh, so, but they should all work the same way, right? So, so yeah. So it's not so much about the monorepo or not. It's, it's probably we, we can leave the, this ones here uh, as a monorepo and then we could have packages, all the packages inside. That's fine. I'm fine with that. But again, we will be able to control all, uh, all the possible um, templates, right? Yeah, yeah, but if you would make sure that they can uh, work as a separate projects, then of course anyone can do it with their secret templates. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. exactly. So that's the point. So probably we can, um, I think we can, we school the, uh, should have issues for those, right? Yeah, we should create issues from this one. That was uh, the the outcome of the previous uh, of the previous uh, meeting, and uh, so yeah, I think it's it will be great. Uh, implement a way to generate classes or types from this schema definition. Um, yeah, so because of um, because of uh, more, uh, one of the most common use cases is gonna be generating code. So the, the most common use cases, because I don't know any other use case for the generator is generate code or generate documentation. <laughs> I don't know any other use case. Um, and because there are many programming languages, most probably we will, we will have soon more uh, code generators than documentation generators, right? So, um, one of the things that the generator could offer to the templates is um, again as part of this generator SDK or something uh, it could be a filter maybe uh, that will offer uh, hey you you call this method here and we'll give you the if you're if you're working on a Java template you call this method and it will give you the Java Pojo for this uh, JSON schema definition. Uh, or if you're working on a Python uh, or a Go uh, template, we'll give you the, the Go structs. Um, you know what I mean? So people don't have to work this themselves. Don't mm -hmm. have to maintain, because otherwise, <clears throat> what's gonna happen is that very quickly, we will have many, uh, many templates because it's already happening that um, for instance one will have uh, a problem when generating the projects here but it has this feature that is really mandatory for my use case but then there's in this other uh, template that doesn't have the feature I need but uh, it's better at generating the projects <laughs> you know so uh, to avoid these inconsistencies with common stuff, we could probably offer this as part of the of the generator, right? Uh, and there is a library for this, which is it's there. Quick type. Um, that's to me, man. That's that saves my my day. <laughs> So, for instance, in the left side, you have a, a JSON schema definition for latitude or for coordinates, right? Uh, latitude, longitude, and test uh, with one off and all this stuff. And on the right side, it generates code in Java. So it, it tells you uh, this will be a coordinate.java file. Here you have uh, everything that will that's be there. Uh, and then you have a test Java, which I guess is this test. And uh, yes, so yeah, and actually, I know it's yeah, it's on the same package. Okay, so you can you can use it from here. Test, you know, so it generates the code. That's the cool thing, and, and yeah, totally valid code. And if I use Go, for instance it will create the uh, ghost tracks uh, mm -hmm. from this JSON schema. 
And since we're using JSON schema for the messages and for the schemas and all this stuff, so we could leverage this, this library. And <laughs> look at this, this is amazing. <laughs> so you can choose a, a lot of languages, right? Like TypeScript, and it will generate TypeScript for, for your, uh, it, it will generate the types, right? Or the interfaces in this case. Um, there are many languages, many. So we could probably offer uh, at the generator level as a, a way for templates to say, hey, I want the Java mm, class here, right, in this file. I want uh, the, the ghost tract in this other template. And they will not have to maintain it. So people will not have to maintain this logic like parsing a JSON schema and generating types, you know? Mm -hmm. We will maintain it, or in this case, uh, QuickType will maintain it. Um, but yeah. So well, that's a JS library, right? JS library, so we, we will be able to use it. Okay. So we, <laughs> we've been lucky. <laughs> okay. What else? Uh, it's here, I think. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so that's uh, that's it from there. Um, we we've been uh, today we've been uh, discussing a feature, uh, an issue that. Uh, well, before we, we before we continue, uh, can can you please create an issue for each of these uh, bullet points? Maybe. No, if not today, tomorrow, whatever. No, no, exactly, exactly. that's what I wanted to um, propose. Okay. I would just, uh, last question to make sure that the third button, uh, bullet, but, uh, bullet button, uh, bullet point, <laughs> uh, I, I handle properly. So th this quick type, this functionality of generating types and classes for whatever language or structs, Mm -hmm. uh, that would be something like optional, right? It would be just part of the generator API that you can exactly. create them. Exactly. It's some something that additional you, feature. It's, it's something that you could use, right? Something that, mm -hmm. but you don't have to. Like, for instance, in the case of uh, documentation generators, you might not want to use it, right? Or maybe yes, maybe you want to give people <laughs> copy paste, right? Uh, so people can copy and paste uh, themselves. But that's, yeah, that's optional. Hmm, that's a good idea now that, now that I'm thinking, like uh, having uh, a way alongside with your documentation to have on the right side, for instance, along with the with examples, you have to, for instance, Java or JavaScript or, or TypeScript or Go, or whatever, and you can copy the class definition or the struct definition from there. Yeah, that's, this could be useful. Probably more than the code generator because people, some people are very skeptic uh, of code generators. So yeah. Well, so that's you, right? You want to say something about it? <laughs> uh, so the automation itself, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. The most important is the 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 site discussion that we had were about uh, this automation. So the the whole flow of working with the repositories uh, where we tackled the topic of uh, working on forks, having only master uh, that is protected uh, from uh, yeah, direct changes without PRs. Um, so looking on the discussion under the issue looks like at least you, me and Jonas, we uh, we like it. Uh, we agree to it. And but I also mentioned at the bottom uh, in that we could also go even further with such an agreement. That maybe we should have a pretty strict approach also to merging uh, policy uh, to have also clean history. Oh, I, I didn't see the last uh, comment. Uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, and the the, the um, 
where was I? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the policy for for merging. So do not let anyone yeah, create PRs. For example, with five commits and we merge it, then we have the pretty dirty history of the the project. So yeah. I would even go further with suggestions like, okay, let's have squash and merge, uh, squash and merge um, as a default uh, for merging, etc. Um, etc. Et and my suggestion maybe would be because it says something side to the topic of automation, maybe I would create a like a list of things I think we we should like standardize, get an opinion of others and then just apply globally to all the repos if mm -hmm. if we agree or not. Mm -hmm. So so I think I'm that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna do. Especially that if we really everyone everyone switches uh, to work on forks would be nice also to have like simple instruction for everyone to set properly the settings on the fork uh, on your local to not uh, have pains with always updating master on your fork etc to have it uh, automated yeah no, uh, so let's yeah so let's not do it overnight i'll, I'll just scratch a uh, an issue with the description of what we could change I'll keep working on the on the repo directly. <laughs> now uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm, my experience with forks. It's like ah oh, yes, really. But it only sounds uh, really. I mean, I remember when we tried uh, when we started introducing it into in in Kima. And like 90% of developers were used to like working directly in the repo. And there was like a lot of pain, but at the end, over day, everyone switched. It's, uh, it's really not a pain at all. Yeah. And then at least you have clear uh, branch history, no yeah. orphans there. Yeah, that's that's true. So the, the history will be cleaner. There will not be zombie uh, branches there. Yeah. <laughs> A long time so yeah that's another thing yeah cool so i like it I'm, I'm, i mean i'm totally into this um even though i don't like it uh, i don't like the way it works but uh, yeah i mean I, I i'm happy with this because um it's not that it's not such a problem for me to change this uh to this way of working right that's that's why i said like um yeah, actually, it's here. I'm happy to take the path. I think I already said that the meeting as Jim has pointed out, but I'm fine with any process as long as we all agree, right? It's like <laughs> as long as we all agree on something, that's fine. What I don't like is uh, is if some people are doing something, and other people are doing other things. Ah, uh, oh, no, this is an exception. Um, then confusion starts, right? So, so yeah, as long as we all agree with, with something. That's fine. And by agreeing doesn't mean that we should be uh, our first choice. Or, uh, for instance, working with uh, with forks will not will not be my first choice. But I'm I'm happy to do it. So it's okay. yeah. it's, it's fine. Uh, and if if we choose it at the end, for sure I'm gonna create a easy to use script that uh, it's gonna be easier for anyone to start contributing. Yeah. Sure. Cool. So, oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. Uh, let's forget. Uh, that's my examples. So coming back to the generator, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna mention this so it's it's recorded and people can look at it. So. This guy, Stefan Seeger, created this ESA Today, which is about uh, supporting base, the base tag, HTML base tag on the HTML template. So when you click on, uh, on the, on the, okay. so, yes. so here, on the HTML documentation, this one, when you have a link, well, that's not a good example. <laughs> I've been touching this. So, 
this one, for instance. Uh, let me try to find something. Mm. Anyway, uh, if you put a link here somewhere, uh, a relative link, it will be pointing to the root of the of the domain, right? Because that's the root, right? So what he's suggesting is that links and forms here, uh, the the base URL for the links and the forms uh, could be changed, right? As a for instance with a parameter. So imagine that they deployed this uh, this documentation not at the root level, but they have this. Uh, it's in docs, that's what he was proposing. Imagine that you, I hit enter now here and I see this documentation. If the links are pointing to the to the root, uh, they will be broken, right? And that's what's happening okay. right now. Uh, he wants to preserve the async desk docs, right? Which is something that we will also benefit from on the playground, by the way. <laughs> so whenever you embed the playground on a, imagine that you have my uh, company.com async API playground. And when you hit enter there, you see this, this playground, uh, it's the same thing. Um, we, will, we will want to, um, to have the links relative to async API that's playground, right? Not relative to the slash, to the root. Uh -huh. So yeah, so, well, so that's the, a little bit the context. The, the guy was really nice at, uh, and very responsive. It was all today. And he created a pull request, which I already approved, by, by the way. So you can have a look later if you want. It's as easy as this. If you pass a param called base href, it will add this HTML on, on the head, on the head of the document, on the on the index HTML file. So nothing really fancy. It's just this, and it works. The thing here is here now is how do we know? And that's my issue now. How do we know how many or which parents a template supports? Right, because the HTML, the HTML uh, uh, template supports it will support base base href and uh, and another one which is a sidebar organization. So the sidebar could be organized following different uh, uh, different things, different uh, uh, ways of sorting the information. And um, so it, it allows you to specify those two params. And, uh, and then for instance, the Node.js template supports uh, the server param, which is uh, when you're generating the code um, and you have three servers on, the, on your async API file, you, you might want to generate the code for a single server, right? Right now, this is the only way to go. Uh, you generate the code for a, for a specific server. Uh, so the configuration file will take the information from that server, not from, you will not get a list or anything. Um, the thing is that to understand what, what params a, a template supports, you have to either look at the code and, ch and check for this if params dot whatever, and then you understand what it is, uh, or the other one, is by um, ourselves manually putting putting it on the on the documentation on the on the readme file for the template, but that's very easy to forget uh, and very easy to you know that we don't, yeah. we don't really maintain. So my proposal is we already have a tp config uh, JSON file, which is template config, right, and. So I'm gonna show you an example of the template config. So Node.js is a good example. It has a TP config file, which is a special kind of file that it will not be copied to the to the result, to the resulting code. 
So this, this file is ignored uh, in the output. And you can put um, information about your template here. Like for instance, I only support, this template only supports MQP, MQTT, Kafka, WebSockets. If you specify other protocols, it will tell you that so the, the protocol is not supported. It requires you to specify the server param. So when generating the code, you have to pass the parameter uh, server, the parameter server. It's mandatory. And all the files here inside the middle middlewares folder and this one here are non-renderable files. What does it mean? It means that they are not template. They're not templates. They should be copied as it is. Just copy them. You know, it's not don't don't process the template. Well, the the the, the key thing here is that required params. So we already had something about params, but we don't have a way to say these are the params that uh, the template supports. We only had a way to say that these params are required. Uh, so my proposal is to have something like this, parameters, base href, description, right? Um, but then, because I realized that we already have the required params, um, I thought, okay, so probably we can read of the we can get rid of the required params uh, configuration on the on the TP config JSON file, and we just have the parameters, server description, and we say if it's required or not. By default, if you don't say anything, it's not required. If you, if you put required true, it will be required, right? And then. Um, we can make the generator check whenever you do this code, you have this code. We could check if my undefined params has been defined here on the list of parameters. And if it hasn't been uh, defined, it will trigger an error, right? So it, it will force you to define the, the, the supported parameters on the, on the TP config file. And so that's one way to enforce documenting uh, in a machine readable way uh, the, um, the, the, the params. The cool thing about it is that in the future, we could create a generator or <laughs> I'm not using the term uh, generator now, but uh, we could have a, another library to, to, um, to generate um, a readme for for, the, for your template. You you pass your template tp config file, and it will uh, generate a readme for you. Or even on the on the command line. Let me check here. So for instance, on the command line, we could do things like um, so. For instance, uh, ag. It's been a long I don't use a generator myself. <laughs> I've been telling people how to use it. And so, so we have AG uh, and I have my SNKPI file. I want to use the Node.js template. And uh, if I do this, like, like this right now, if I have the SNKPI ML file, which is not the case, it will be valid. Uh, but it will fail anyway because we said that the server param is required. You need to pass a server param, right? So we should have something like this: server equal protection, okay, for instance. And um, so that's what it what it uh, what it does. The cool thing about uh, having this in a in a machine readable way is that at some point we could add things like um, I don't know. I want to. I want to have uh, AG help. Um, I'm inventing the, the syntax here now. Node.js. Okay, and it will show you a list the uh, the list of params or mm -hmm. you know, the, the, it could tell you like, hey, so the the Node.js uh, template will require you to specify the server uh, parameter and it also has these other parameters that you can use to tweak the result, uh, but they are not mandatory, but it's there and it's documented. So people can discover uh, what can they do with the, with, the, 
with the templates. So yeah, so I think, um, so that's, that's it. Basically, I think we can, in some way, we can enforce people to document um, the, the parameters and probably in, I don't know, in the, in the future, we can even uh, require here that uh, you describe using JSON schema, for instance, the type of the parameter, if it's a string, if it's will be an array, if it's a, you know, all this stuff. But that's too much for now. <laughs> so does it make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, so um, I think we're gonna start uh, closing now. Uh, uh, before I stop uh, recording, uh, I would like to um, thank you a lot for, for joining us, man. Uh, so this is now recorded. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us in KPI and, and yeah. Big round of applause for you. <laughs> Looking Thank forward you. to great uh, contributions together. This is the first one of, uh, of many successful uh, meetings, I'm sure. Meetings and, 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 and more stuff. We're gonna rock for sure. Oh, of course. <laughs> cool, so um, I'm gonna stop uh, recording so we can start with the beers. Uh, Okay. Uh, I don't think I stopped.